far we've been talking exclusively about the Cartesian coordinate system. Some problems are easier to solve using other coordinate systems, usually because of some form of symmetry in the geometry of the problem. For this class, we'll be using two other coordinate systems, one useful for cylindrical symmetry and one useful for spherical symmetry. First, let's talk about the cylindrical coordinate system. This system is defined using the unit vectors AR, which points in the radial direction outward from the z-axis, a phi, which points in the counterclockwise direction around the z-axis, and a z, which points in the z-direction. These directions are specified graphically here. Note that, like the xyz triad, r phi z is also a right-handed progression. In this coordinate system, the variable z is exactly the same as in the Cartesian coordinate system we discussed before. r is a linear measurement outward from the z-axis, and phi is angle measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. Because of the way this system is defined, the range of r is constrained to positive values going outward from the z-axis, and the range of phi is from 0 to 2 pi, which takes you once around the z-axis. In cylindrical space, any given vector may be described as the sum of scaled versions of those three unit vectors, a r, a phi, and a z. If the vector varies as a function of location, the scalar terms may be given in terms of the spatial variables r, phi, and z. For instance, this vector points in the z-direction, with magnitude increasing as you get further away from the z-axis. If you want to convert a vector from Cartesian space to cylindrical space, or vice versa, there are two parts you need to consider. You must convert the variables, and you must also convert the unit vectors. Luckily, these are both relatively simple operations. If a vector is given in Cartesian space, the variables may be converted to cylindrical space using these conversion formulas. Simply swap out each of the Cartesian variables for their cylindrical equivalent. Similarly, each of the unit vectors may be converted according to these formulas. There are also similar formulas for the reverse operation when you're converting from cylindrical space to Cartesian space. These are the formulas for converting the variables and these are the formulas for converting the unit vectors. You don't need to memorize these formulas, but you may want to print out a copy and keep it handy, since we'll be using them frequently. You can find a printable sheet in the note slides that accompany this lecture. There are also several examples you may want to work through to become familiar with the process for converting between Cartesian and cylindrical domains. 